Hello, we're going to talk about the three stages of reading and I'm going to go through a reading and model for you what good readers do before, during, and after reading something. So the three stages of reading are pre, before reading, in which you might preview the title, the headings, the pictures, make predictions, right, pre, so before, um, think about what you already know about the topic and form a purpose for reading. So let's look at this article and let's practice these pre-reading strategies. So this article is one on Blackboard that relates to our North Star Unit 1, which is about nature versus nurture. So let's look at it. It's called Identical Strangers and it has this little quote identical strangers kind of funny because hmm they're identical maybe identical twins but they're strangers so maybe they didn't know each other um, explore nature versus nurture so what do I already know about nature and nurture so nature is kind of what we're born with and nurture nurture is how people care for us Hmm, look at the pictures. Look like two sisters. Here the caption says Paula Bernstein on the left and Elise Shine are identical twins who are separated as infants and adopted by different families. Hmm, that's really interesting. So I wonder if they have a lot of things in common, even though they were raised by different families, or if the nurture kind of made them very different people because you know they never knew each other until a certain time I guess maybe as adults right so I don't really know but I'm forming a purpose for reading where I'm thinking I want to find out about them and if it's more about their nature or their nurture okay now let's go into the during reading so I'm going to read it and I'm going to stop and summarize sometimes I'm going to try to realize when I don't understand and then go back and reread I'm going to try to note the main ideas and interesting points, and I want to see a picture in my mind of what I'm reading. Okay, so let's go to this interesting story where we want to find out about these twins separated at birth. Oh, and here it says they were reunited in 2004 when they were 35. Hmm. By then you're pretty, pretty much an adult and kind of have your own way of being, so... Okay, let's look. Identical Strangers, Chapter 1. This must be from part of a book. Elise, my mother, my adopted mother, my real mother, died when I was six. But throughout my childhood, I believe she watched over me from above. I held the few images that remained of her in my mind, like precious photographs I could animate at will. In one, she sat before her dressing table, lining her charcoal eyes, preparing to go out with my dad one Saturday night. The scent of her Chanel number no. five is enchanting. Hmm. Here I see a picture of her mother, and she's a little girl watching her mother putting on makeup and getting ready to go out with her dad. I can still see her. She catches a glimpse of me in the mirror and smiles at me, standing in the doorway in my pajamas. With her raven hair, she looks like Snow White. Okay, you know Snow White? Raven is like the type of bird that's all black, so she has very dark hair but she must have light skin. Then, after her death, she seemed to simply disappear, like a princess banished to some faraway kingdom. I believe that from that kingdom she granted me magical powers. So she's a little girl. So she's, you know, thinking like a little girl. And she looked like a princess, so she's imagining this. When I jumped rope better than the other girls in my Long Island neighborhood, I knew it was because my mother was with me. When I went f out fishing with my dad and brother, my mother helped me haul in the catch of the day. By sheer concentration, I could summon her, f summon her force so that my frog won the neighborhood race. Since I wasn't allowed to attend my mother's funeral, her death remained a mystery to me. Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe they thought it'd be too upsetting for the little girl to see her mother dead. When other kids asked how she had died, I confidently announced that she had had a backache. I later earned, learned that her back problems had been caused by the cancer invading her spine. 
So probably as a little child, she didn't really understand cancer. So I get this, I'm kind of feeling how the author feels as a child and the mother, you know, kind of being enchanted with her mother is this magical person and then she's suddenly gone. It's very sad. And I'm kind of wondering, she said, my mother, my adopted mother, my real mother died when I was six. Hmm. A little confused. I guess I'm going to keep reading. Is this her real mother or her adoptive mother? This is her adoptive mother. Her adoptive mother died when she was six. Maybe later she finds out she was adopted. Maybe she didn't know that. Okay, let's keep reading. Along with my mother's absence came an awareness of my own presence. I remember standing in complete darkness in front of the bay windows in our house shortly after her death. Alone, except for my reflection, I became aware of my own being. As I pulled away from the glass, my image disappeared. I asked myself, why am I me and not someone else? Huh, that's interesting. Do you remember realizing that as a child and thinking about, you know, realizing that you're a unique person? Because when you're really little, you don't know that until you get a little bit, a little bit older. Until autumn of 2002, I had never searched for my birth parents. Hmm, I wonder what happened in 2002. I was proud to be my own invention, having created myself out of several cities and cultures. In my ignorance surrounding my mother's death, I amplified the importance of the few facts I had accumulated. She was 33 when she died, which I somehow linked to our new home address at 33 Granada Circle. It was probably no coincidence that when I reached the age of 35, after one year in Paris, the urge to know the truths of my origins grew stronger. Turning 33 felt the way other people described turning 30. I felt that I should automatically transform into an adult. So she has this weird feeling with 33 because her mother, her adopted mother, died at that age. Okay. I'm going to let you read, so you pause the video and you read for a little bit and you keep thinking about some of these things and then we'll come back together. Okay, let's come back together at the end of this story. So hopefully you've read this and this link is on Blackboard so you could also open it up. You don't have to try to read it from the video because I've scrolled to the end. And here she says, I filled in a form requesting identifying and non-identifying information about my birth parents and sent it to the registry in Albany. This is kind of like the beginning of the story, actually. So we don't know yet, because it ends here. We don't know yet what happened with her and her sister. It's only the story from Elise. Now, if we go back to those three stages of reading, I say post, after, check my predictions, and did I find my purpose? Well, my purpose, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about their nature and nurture, and I didn't really find that in this article. Um, I think that's because this is just a small part of a book. Like we said, it's a chapter one. So if I look at the whole thing again, you can see, yeah, this is a book. So I think I would have to read the whole book to get my answer. So I may have to continue reading. Now I really want to read this book. So you can see how the author's trying to get us interested because we're thinking and trying to get, uh, you know, find the answers to our predictions. So that's all part of the, you know, the reading process. And that's what makes it interesting and makes us want to keep reading. And that's also part of the discuss with others. So then, you know, I'm talking about it with you. You can talk about it with your classmates and your friends and family and see. Maybe somebody say, oh, I did read that book or I've heard stories like that. Um, we will read more about this in class. So this is part of you getting some interest in, in this topic. Okay. Well, that gives you a little bit of an idea. We're going to keep coming back to these three stages of reading all semester because remember, reading is a process. We don't just read. We, we do it just like any other process, like baking a cake, uh, getting ready in the morning. You know, there's certain things that we have to do before we can do others in order for that process to go smoothly. All right. Well, hope that you find this topic interesting and see you soon. Bye-bye.